just want to show you a really easy way to remove logos or whatever it is you need to remove out of frame in a static shot in Final Cut Pro using Adobe Generative Fill. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. First thing I'm going to do is just go to my clip. Uh, if I hit C, it goes to the whole timeline just to serve here. If I hit left bracket, it trims the front of that clip. Just need the serve. Hit the right bracket, it's going to trim the tail end of that clip. Hit C again, and it's going to show me the entire timeline. What I need to do here is remove all of these logos because this Amazon doesn't want to see these logos. Because this is a static clip, that makes it super easy to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export a just a still frame. If you don't have that option there, the save current frame, you can click on add destination. And then once you're in add destination, when you click on add destination again, you're going to see save current frame. Click on that. You can just drag it over and then it will show up in your export options. Save current frame default. Going to hit next. I'll put that right in that. And I, I just title it pre generative. That way I know that it is the base file before I did the generative fill on it. That goes super quickly. Uh, it can export still frames very quickly. Once you have that still exported, go over to your folder where you just saved it. And you're going to open that with Adobe Photoshop 2024. You could also use Adobe Photoshop beta. I use 2024 because it has it in there. So now you're just going to select whatever it is that you need to remove. So let's say I don't even want my backpack and sweatshirt and stuff in there. And then I definitely don't want the logos in there. So if I hit space bar, even when I have that, it allows me to kind of move it around. I'm just zooming in with my fingers. All right, and then I'm going to add the logo here on this paddle. Boom. I'm going to add in this logo here on my bag. And then this logo here. The other thing is I want to do the red of this. Myla, come here. Sit, buddy. Sit. Good. Good. I'm going to add the red on there. And generative fill does a great job. Like you don't need to do even probably as good of a job as I just did. So we've got everything selected that we want to fill. I'm going to click on generative fill. I'm not going to type anything in the box and hit create. Can you see out there? See some friends? Great. And then once that goes, boom, that looks pretty good. I always just like to toggle through, make sure that it's the one that I like the most. They all look pretty good in my opinion. I think I'm going to do this one. I'm going to turn off the background layer and then I'm going to export that as just a PNG because that's going to save the transparency there. Import that file back in. Kiwi Labs done. All right, so once that is imported, if I drag it right on top of my clip, trim the tail end of that. You can see here that it's all, all of those logos are gone. So I'll just hit five, deselect it, five, reselect it. And you can see kind of the difference there. Now, the last thing that I need to do, because the ball passes through just right there, that literally that one frame, I just need to mask out that part. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to hit plus a bunch of times, zoom the whole way in. I'm going to blade just that top photo, that one frame blade there. And I'm just going to throw a shape mask. Shape mask. Quick word about the sponsor of the video, Squarespace. With the new Fluid Engine from Squarespace, making the website of your dreams has never been easier. You start out with this professionally designed template. You don't need to know how to code, already made for you. And then you can tweak it using this brand new UI, drag and drop, very easy to use. Your website is going to work on both desktop and mobile, which is absolutely crucial. You can schedule appointments through your site, offer private sessions, coaching calls, workshops. And then when you're ready to make some tweaks and improvements, the analytics suite inside 
Squarespace is second to none. If you want to try it out, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Warner. And then when you're ready to buy, use the code Cody Warner to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Uh, I got to zoom back out so that I can see. Hey, no growling. Oh, there's Kristen Christian. All right, so we've got that shape mask. Make that into more of a circle. You could also do this just with a regular mask if it was a more intensive object. All right, so once it's almost a circle, I'm just going to bring it over to the ball and then scale it down closer to that. And then once it's scaled down, now I can zoom in. If I hold Option and move this, it goes like it's more of a fine tuning adjustment. The mask needs to be inverted, so if I go up here, Invert mask, now only the ball is visible. Go back to fit, there we go. So that is the super simple way to just remove logos or remove house numbers or remove whatever it is you need to do. What if you wanna expand the frame? The easiest way that I've found to do this, turn this all into a compound clip so that I don't have to worry about it detaching or doing anything weird. In order to expand the frame, because I'm not planning on making it like larger than 4K or larger than 1080, I forget what this clip is, you're not actually expanding the frame. You're shrinking your portion of video that you've shot in the frame and you're keeping the pixels of your frame the same. So because of that, what I'm gonna do, instead of just expanding the frame inside Photoshop and then having to figure out how to rescale my image back down, once it comes back into Final Cut, I'm gonna shrink my image in Final Cut, then use Generative Fill to fill in that black space that it's gonna create, bring that back in, and then it's gonna already be kind of matched up, lined up. So let me show you that. I'm gonna scale this down. I need more space in the frame, but maybe gotta put something over on the left-hand side or whatever. I'm going to save the frame there. Go back to Photoshop, file open. All right, so you see all this black space, right? I'm just gonna select my frame, select the inverse, and unlock the background there. Hit delete. Now it's just transparent, all right? So like generative fill won't be taking any of that darkness into account. Well, that is the weirdest result I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, I like that, even though it messed with the line there, I don't really care. I'm gonna go to File, Export, and this time, instead of as a PNG, I'm gonna export this as a JPEG. And the reason for that is Final Cut is generally working in like a JPEG color space, and the PNG color space and the JPEG color space are like a little bit different. So you're gonna get a little bit of a discrepancy in colors there. I'm gonna bring it back in here. And again, now that I already have this, it's easy to just drop that under. And as you can see, like it already is perfectly seamless because I don't have to go back and try to match up and try to get it to the right size. So let me just zoom in here and make sure that it is truly seamless, five. So look at that, you can actually see just a bit of a seam there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to add a shape mask and I'm gonna bring the scale of that thing up. Turn off my bottom clip real quick so I can make sure that I'm right. Hey. Oh, okay. Okay. Was he barking or no? So yeah, just bring the scale on that down so that it's just starting to cut off. I can make it not round. There, that looks good. And then now when I turn the bottom clip back on, we're not going to see any of that seam. So the ball is obviously flying into a space that it no longer exists in. So what we could do is get a copy of the ball here and kind of track the motion, make it, make it continue along that path. But I think we'll save that for another tutorial. Thanks so much for being here.